Hello, and welcome to The Truth in Crisis. I'm Don Pinnell. In a previous program, we reviewed the desecration that took place at the Fatima Shrine in May 2004. Since then, further displays of opposition have taken place. But first, here's a look back at how it all began. On May 5, 2004, a busload of Portuguese Hindus traveled from Lisbon to the shrine in Fatima to participate in an event that would send shockwaves of scandal throughout the Catholic world, rattling even the Vatican itself. These Hindus, led by a Hindu priest, would offer worship to Devi, not in some Hindu temple, but in the little chapel, or capelina, at the shrine, built on the very ground where Our Lady appeared to call for the conversion of Russia to Catholicism, and the triumph of her Immaculate Heart throughout the world. Who is this idol Devi that Hindus worship? According to Smithsonian Magazine, she is the goddess of, quote, a thousand names and faces. Westerners accustomed to a heavenly father and to seeing virginal subdued images of the Madonna might find Devi and her wildly vigorous feminine power quite startling. On occasion, she is voluptuous and alluring, a playful temptress, close quote. In other words, the false goddess Devi represents the very opposite of Mary, the Immaculate Mother of God. Devi is the vulgar, earthly creation of human religion, founded on primitive superstition. Yet this is the goddess the Hindus were permitted by Father Guara to publicly worship at Fatima on May 5, 2004, on the very ground where the Virgin Mother of the true God appeared. As a Hindu representative explained, the Hindus who settled in Portugal view the Fatima Shrine as a sacred place they were lacking for their worship of the many gods of Hinduism. The Kapalina is about to be used by them as a center for their worship. And so, with the approval of Father Gaur, the worship of Devi at the Kapalina began with a puja, a Hindu prayer to Devi in the form of an offering of flowers, placed at the foot of the statue of Our Lady of Fatima, which the Hindus regard as a representation of their voluptuous goddess of a thousand names. While the puja was being offered to Devi, the Hindu priest who led this group of Hindus into the sanctuary of the Kapalina stood behind the altar where a Catholic priest would normally stand when offering the Mass in the new rite introduced by Pope Paul VI. From this position at the Catholic altar, where the holy sacrifice of the Mass is offered, the Hindu priest intoned the Shanti Pa, a Hindu prayer for peace addressed to the Hindu god Vishnu, the so-called destroyer of worlds. Rector Guerra did not hesitate to contribute to the impression that all religions are one, and this is why he permitted the Hindus to worship Devi at Fatima. He told SIC's reporter that there is a common background in all religions, born of the common humanity we all possess and that it is very important to recognize this common background because in the conflict between peoples, we sometimes forget our equality, which is why, he told the reporter, we have occasions for meetings such as this. The message being that all religions are equal and should have access to the Fatima Shrine. The Hindu priests and pilgrims were then received by the Fatima authorities as if they were ambassadors, according to SIC television, which described the reception as an unheard of gesture, which can be understood as an invitation for other visits. We don't want to be fundamentalists, said the Bishop of Fatima for the camera. Guerra and the Bishop of Fatima then allowed themselves to be draped in a Hindu prayer shawl covered with verses from Hindu scripture the same scripture that teaches the worship of many false gods, including Devi. The events you have just witnessed led to worldwide Catholic outrage against the desecration of the Fatima Shrine. There was news that the Vatican would remove Father Guerra and the Bishop of Fatima. There was also a report of Guerra's embarrassed promise that such a thing would never happen again. And yet, this is the same Father Guerra who defended the sacrilege before the cameras of the SIC network. As of the date of this report, the Fatima Shrine is still under his control. The desecration of the Fatima Shrine has yet to be dealt with by the Vatican. We'll hear more about this in just a moment. The Rosary, a prayer in honor of Our Lady, 
Sister Lucy said there is no problem, no matter how big, that cannot be solved by the power of the Holy Rosary. Whether sickness, addictions, or other deep personal problems, the Rosary is a special gift from Our Lady that will bring solace and comfort. As a bonus, call us at the end of this program, and we will send you a beautiful free blessed Rosary, along with a Rosary Novena booklet to help you pray your Rosary. Call now, toll-free, 1-888-FATIMA-1. Welcome back. In August of 2005, thousands of Catholics converged on the Fatima Shrine for a pilgrimage of reparation. The purpose of the pilgrimage was to make reparation for the desecration that took place there in May of 2004. The pilgrims were confronted with severe opposition, as you will see here. A unique pilgrimage of reparation was organized primarily by the Society of St. Pius X to make public reparation for the May 5, 2004 desecration of the Fatima Shrine. On that day, Hindus were permitted by the Shrine Rector of Fatima to commandeer the sanctuary. It was a pagan ceremony. A Hindu priest at the Catholic altar in the little chapel of the apparitions chanted a prayer for peace to the false gods of Hinduism, and a Hindu congregation chanted Hindu responses. This public desecration called for public atonement. On August 21st and 22nd, thousands of concerned Catholics from around the world converged on Fatima to make this act of reparation. From the time that the Hindus desecrated the sanctuary, Fatima Shrine Rector Guerra has been hostile to traditional Catholics protesting the outrage, and that hostility reared its head during the day of reparation on August 22nd. Upon arriving at the shrine on that day, the hundreds of priests, four bishops, many religious, and thousands of faithful confronted a barricade that blocked their way to the little chapel of the apparitions, even though the Society of St. Pius X had made an agreement with shrine authorities to be at the little chapel at that hour. This concluded with another oddity. We arrived at 1.30 p.m., as had been long planned and announced, and the shrine had char women vacuum in the sanctuary. One priest, who has often been to Fatima, said he never saw this before. Women vacuuming the sanctuary in the middle of the day. The men from the procession opened up the barricade themselves, and the huge crowd took its place in front of the little chapel of the apparitions. We never entered the chapel itself. The four bishops of the Society of St. Pius X knelt in front of the little chapel. The ensemble of pilgrims chanted the Litany of the Sacred Heart, and then began to pray the Rosary in Latin. At about the third decade of the Rosary, Four nuns from the Fatima Shrine approached the podium in the sanctuary as if they were going to start a ceremony of their own. We had just finished a decade, so we began singing the Christus Vinces. Immediately after we started our hymn, the nuns from the shrine began to sing over the microphone a different hymn from ours in an attempt to disrupt our prayers. It was a dramatic standoff. The nuns continued the challenge, singing their own hymns over the microphone. An Irish brother who was with our group stepped over the small outside wall around the little chapel and made his way toward the nuns. His plan, he told me later, was to pull the microphone away from these peculiar sisters who were treating us with derision. As he approached the nuns, he was seized by shrine guards. A scuffle ensued. Various pilgrims in the crowd gasped in horror. Bishop Alfonso de Galaretta from the Society of St. Pius X rose to his feet to establish calm. The guards released the brother. The shrine nuns withdrew from the sanctuary and we continued our prayers. Within two minutes, the shrine authorities retaliated. Sacred music suddenly began to blast from the shrine sound system. It was full volume. It was so loud that I could barely hear the rosary recited by the people around me. The entire esplanade vibrated from the shrine's state-of-the-art sound system designed to project sound to tens of thousands of people. It was sacred music used as a weapon against traditional Catholics. Clearly, the shrine authorities blasted the music to drown us out and drive us out. And they may have drowned us out, but they did not get rid of us. We continued the rosary as the music blared. The bishops, priests, and people renewed the act of consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The pilgrims sang a final hymn to Our Lady and broke into applause while doing so. Then the entire group solemnly processed from the little chapel. The act of reparation was concluded. We completed what we set out to do, despite the Shrine Authority's clumsy attempt at disruption. To discuss the events that took place at the Fatima Shrine, 
We now join Father Nicholas Gruner and our roundtable panelists. Hello, I'm Chris Ferrara, and this is The Truth in Crisis. Today we're having a panel discussion. With me are Father Nicholas Gruner and John Venari. The subject is the film you have just seen, a documentary of an act of reparation made by Catholics at the Fatima Shrine this past August 21st and 22nd, 2005. Let's have a little background. What were you making reparation for? Well, the act of reparation was done uh, primarily because on May 5th, 2004, as is documented on this program and uh, printed in the Fatima Crusader and the Catholic Family News, there was a Hindu ceremony that took place on the Catholic altar at, at the Shrine of Fatima, at the little chapel of the apparitions. That's with the, the busload of 60 Hindus yes. going from Lisbon to Fatima yes. to the Capilina, right. which they is were, the little they chapel. Were, they were not going there as a group, just as outsiders, to look at the shrine to see what was there. They went and performed with the permission of the rector, the shrine rector, Rector Guerra. Father Guerra. Father Guerra. They performed a Hindu ceremony invoking their false gods in a prayer for peace. The, the priest... Uh, chanted and the congregation responded. When you say the priest, the you, priest mean, you mean the, the Hindu, Hindu? The Hindu the, priest. We put priest in quotes. Uh, the, he stood at the Catholic altar, the place reserved for the priest during the holy sacrifice of the mass, and chanted to false gods. This is May fifth, two thousand four. May fifth, two thousand four. I, I saw the footage. I saw first of all a busload of Hindus going from Lisbon. Their well, Hindu before temple. that, even they they went from their Hindu yeah, ceremony. Yeah, their Hindu temple. And and they, they drove and, in their and, bus. And, and, and they had their ceremony, Hindu ceremony. And they went from the Hindu ceremony there, and they got on the bus to go as a group, and they had their Hindu ceremony at, at Fatima. So they traveled the, to Fatima. I, I saw the footage where they got off the bus, all six of them, led by their so-called Hindu priest in his saffron garments. They go into the Capilina, which is a little chapel, the very spot where Our Lady, Our Lady appeared. appeared. Yes. They built a little chapel there to commemorate the apparitions. As I, as I saw the footage, the, the th three women went up with bunches of flowers, held them up to the statue of Our Lady, lowered them, and then you, you see the footage cutting to the priest who's intoning the Shanti Pa, which is the Hindu prayer of peace to the uh, Hindu god Vishnu. And now, Vishnu is the one is the god of destruction. I mean, Our Lady came to bring peace. The, the Vishnu, isn't that the one that brings destruction, war, and death? I believe so, yes. I mean, the main point that is that he's, he's, they're, they're invoking false gods. And the Psalms say all the gods of the Gentiles are devils. Now, it could be said that the women were offering flowers to Our Lady as an act of respect to her. But as I recall the footage... The announcer was saying, no, on that day they were going to honor their goddess, Devi. Yes. Who is Devi? Yes. I'm not sure. It's just one of, the, it's just one uh -uh. of the, the many pagan goddesses in Hinduism. And what they see is the Hindus see, in Our Lady of Fatima, they kind of see a representation of Devi. So they're not really praying to Our Blessed Mother as the Mother of Christ, but they kind of super, they take Our Lady and they superimpose their own beliefs in goddess uh, goddess beliefs on her. Well, actually, so it was not an act of honor. By the way, to and it, the yeah. Smithsonian Magazine says that uh, Devi is a kind of all-purpose deity for the, for the yes. Hindus. Well, that fits, the goddess yeah. of a thousand faces. Yes. And they, they describe her, and I, you know, I, I hate to verge on scandal, but it has to be said so the truth will be known. They describe her not only as this multi-purpose goddess, but as a voluptuous temptress. Yes. Temptress, um, which is, of course, the opposite of the purity of Our Lady of Fatima, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God. So here are these uh, Hindus going to Fatima to offer flowers to a statue that they think represents a voluptuous temptress. Yes, and as we saw in the film, we saw that, that Rector Guerra uh, welcomed them, said that he was happy for them to be here. The Bishop of Fatima said, well, we don't want to be fundamentalists and welcome them here. They were given the, uh, the, uh, these, these robes of some sort with uh, verses of one of their holy books on it. Um, yeah, that's the footage where they, they go, they're received um, by Father Guerra after the event. Yes. Uh, the Hindu priest goes into his office or wherever it is, and you see him draping Father Guerra with the Hindu prayer shawl. And, and also the bishop as well. And the bishop yes. as well. Yes. Bishop yes. Which, which well, let's, let's fast forward now you, you, to the act of reparation. Well, the thing is, is this was a, this was a public scandal. Worldwide publicity. Public, yes. Public act, and, and of course the Fatima Crusader published it, Catholic Family News published it, we published pictures from the, uh, from the, from the, well, it was also shown on, I mean, primarily, we knew about it because it was shown on SIC television. That's where this footage in came Portugal, from. And, and, the, and, the, and the thing is that it was our office staff that saw it on television and told us about it. But then Rector Guerra's response was, well, nothing really happened. And I, in fact, he's still telling that story to the people this year. I mean, I, I've got it from two different sources. One was at a hotel manager, and the other one is a nun. Now, the, 
the hotel manager told me and the nun told uh, my friend Dr. Wimberly uh, that the director says nothing happened. So the strategy is deny, deny, Or they deny. claim that the, picture, the pictures that we published were doctored. So Which I, there weren't. Anybody could just see the film. And say, we, just, we just took freeze frames from the film itself. There's no doctoring at all. Of course not. He, he and, did and, it, but, but, you know, but when I showed, I showed the picture to the hotel manager, and she was, <laughs> she just took a double take when she saw it because she knew what she had been told by the rector, and what and what she saw in film was quite different. Obviously. Well, he's been he's been very he's been very crafty in this whole affair. First, he said that uh, earlier in the year there were intimations at this conference they had. Was it October of two thousand three? Or yes, you were you attended yes, that. Attended you attended that. that. There were intimations that the Fatima Shrine would be opened up to the worship of other religions, and you published that. And they said, "Oh, nothing of the kind will happen." Yeah, well, and then in May of two thousand four, the yes, Hindus are there yes, worshiping. Yes, that's right. So then he first he denied that it would happen. Then it happened. Then I understand. Under Vatican pressure, he said, it would never happen again. And he, first and, he and, said and nothing it, would happen, then he let it happen, and then, and then he, he said it would happen again. Then he first of all now denied it. Now he's back to denying it. Now he's back to saying it, yes. But, but then, then he said, well, it got out of hand. But to the locals, he's still saying nothing happened. So, you know, is, 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 internationally, there's been an outcry in both the, in, in Europe as, as well as North America, and he's finally admitted internationally that something happened. Sure, and the Portuguese yeah. press was reporting Vatican pressure. There were even uh, rumors that he was going to be replaced by the Vatican. Yeah. But then let's talk about, in the remaining time, this act of reparation. We only have about two yes, minutes Well, a public, a public blasphemy. Is this was like August a, 22nd of this yeah, year. Yeah, it, such a public act of, of, of desecration called for public reparation. And so groups of ca Catholics converged on Fatima uh, in order to make this public act of reparation. Uh, primarily run by the Society of St. Pius X. There were people from all over the world. Father Gruner had a pilgrimage going, people from all over the world to attend this. There now, we saw this procession on the film. Yes. Thousands of Catholics processing toward the Capolina, and then you all knelt and you were praying the rosary yes. and doing other things. And then it, I, I see that three nuns got up. It was actually four. Four, yeah. and they yeah. tried to commandeer the little microphone. Right, yeah, you can and see that. apparently that didn't work, and they sat down, and all of a sudden this blaring music began. Tell us, tell us about that. Well, um, that's ex I mean, exactly what you saw is what happened. We, we, we were praying our prayers, and I think it was about 10 after 2, so it wasn't that they had a ceremony that they had to start. Plus, all the arrangements had been made that they would that the, the, the pilgrims would be there from 1.30 to 2.30. When you say arrangements, did you have permission from the shrine to be there? Uh, Father Schmidtberger says yes, they had okay. the permission. All right. And um, so anyway, uh, we were praying our prayers, and these nuns just start singing over top of our prayers, just start singing over top of it, which is just an act of rudeness. They would have not done that to a group of Jews. They would have not done that to a group of Hindus. They would not do that to a group of Muslims. But they did it to traditional Catholics, whose purpose there was to make reparation. So then you saw what happened. There was one uh, Irish brother who, who, uh, who said, well, I'm going to do something about this. And he went up, and I asked him afterwards what he was going to do. He says, well, I was just going to take their microphone away. Uh, there, was the, there was a scuffle, and then everybody well, but, but dispersed. Before, before all that happened, though, I mean, there were gestures in telling them not to do it, not, yes. to, not to keep trying to. So the, first of all, they, 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 obviously they could see that there's 4,000 or 2,000 people They being there. the nuns. The people nuns. were they trying to tell the nuns We were to already stop. in the middle of a rosary. We were saying a rosary out loud. And then when they started to, to and then somebody put, got, put them up to it, but then when they, they started... Yes, we, they, they, the nuns were clearly told to do this. Yeah. They just weren't acting I mean, they, 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 on their own. Absolutely they were clearly childish? Told. Absolutely childish. Three nuns getting Quite, up in the midst of some group praying the rosary and trying to drown them out? Well, well What kind of it, nonsense it, is that? It's absolute nonsense. And then after that... This is the work. Fatima Shrine. This is the too. Fatima Shrine. I mean, our crime was that we were kneeling at the Fatima Shrine saying a rosary. That was our crime. Well, you know, you hear music yeah. on, on the tape. After the nuns gave up, the three of them could not drown yes. out all of those people, even with their little microphone, they gave up, but then you heard music coming. Well, they well, how then, I mean, I don't know then, if you can really appreciate this. How loud was that music? I well, could barely hear the people praying the rosary next to me. Well, then, it was so this is a state-of-the-art sound system designed to project the human voice during a mass or a religious ceremony to, to, to the tens of thousands of people. Well, to the hundreds fill, of thousands Hundreds of thousands of people that can fill that esplanade. They had it cranked up with sacred music purposely trying to drown it, and we know this because people well, the, in Fatima told us they have never, ever heard the music played that loudly before. And that never. far away from where and they that are. that far away they were. I noticed during the... I had, to put the my, I had to put my cover on my ear on the side that the microphones were because it was hurting my ear. I, I noticed that you, you took one shot, a long shot, from way outside the uh, semicircle 
where the where the basilica is and the Capilina is. You must have been Several back hundred yards about a thousand oh, yeah. yards or a thousand well, feet. I'll, yes, and, and you the could end, still hear the music. Towards boom. the end too, when I was interviewing uh, various priests, we were all the way at the back of the Esplanade, as far as we can go. Now that they've they're, they're building that new basilica, or that well, you want to call it that, that bunker church that they're building. But uh, I was we were as far back as we could go, and and I could barely hear the priests talking to me. I mean, what does it say about ten the, minutes walk away? The, the people in the hotel said they've never heard it that far away. Yeah, you know, from they live a good ten minutes yeah. away. They have never heard. They could hear the music from their front doors. I mean, we've got a couple of minutes left, but I mean, really, what does this tell us about the state of the church today? A group of Hindus is invited to go into the Capilina congr to pray to their voluptuous. Yeah. Empress Re goddess. Received, what, what, did the, what did the tape say? Well, the, 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 they were received almost as, as a diplomatic embassy. Right, you know? and then Catholics, 2,000 traditional Catholics, Who go believe there. everything the church always They're told. They're kept out of the Capilina. Nuns try to drown them out, and blaring music Well, no, what, what it was, you didn't see, and we didn't mention anywhere, but they were, there was agreed, we, and we had the procession. At the beginning of the procession, I was towards the beginning of it, we were actually blocked off entrance. Yeah, they had and a barricade they, up where it should they, have been open. So it should have been open. And so they had to, the, the, the Frenchman in the front had to break that open before, uh, before they could get to the Capolinia. So it's Hindus welcome, and Catholics take a walk, is basically what's going on at the Fatima Shrine. And this is the very place where Our Lady of Fatima appear. Well, I mean, what does that say? I mean, doesn't... Doesn't the phrase diabolical disorientation come well, to mind? Uh, that, that's at, at least that. I mean, you know, the, the shrine would seem to be in the hands of people who are not really interested in the message of Fatima. Well, also, throughout this entire, throughout this entire uh, drama of the Interreligious Congress in 2003, the May uh, event with the Hindus in 2004, the shrine authorities, starting with uh, Rector Guerra, Father Guerra, have continually been hostile to those Catholics who have stood up and said, this type of ecumenical activity is not Catholic. It is scandalous. It is bad for souls. You shouldn't be doing it. Well, it, I, I think it's, and, it's pretty terrible. And terrifying you saw that it. hostility rear its head at that pilgrimage of reparation. Well, I, to me, the frightening thing is that this kind of conflict is occurring at ground zero of the Fatima apparition, where the church was told that Our Lady was appearing to proclaim the triumph of her Immaculate Heart and the conversion of Russia. And here's this, uh, this wayward rector of the shrine turning it into a place for Hindu worship, then denying that he's doing it. Well, the fact is, I mean, the, the, the message of Fatima has been tried. They've tried to bear the message of Fatima a hundred different ways. And this way, of course, they're just trying to, they're trying to change the Fatima message into something else. They're trying to turn the shrine into something else so that they can just ignore it, bury it, put it away. They don't want the Fatima message. Of course, Fatima is a prophetic message. It's a warning to the faithful. It's a warning to the hierarchy. It's a warning to everybody. And they don't want to hear that warning. They want to transform it or bury it. Yeah, they're trying to take Our Lady of Fatima, who called for the conversion of Russia, and turn her into Our Lady of Interreligious dialogue. That's what's that's going on there. Uh, but that's, you're not just making that up, Chris. That's exactly what the rector said. That when Our Lady appeared at Fatima, well, Fatima was the name of Mohammed's daughter, so this was the Blessed Mother's way of telling us that we should engage in interreligious dialogue with Muslims. Well, Fatima, which is, Fatima false, but, is the name of Mohammed's daughter, but what they don't tell you is that refers to the, the princess, the Muslim princess. Who became of, Catholic. Of Orem, yes. who converted. Yes. Yeah, she was Fatima. And she never had the name Fatima yeah. after yeah. her conversion. I forget what her Christian name was. Orem. But after she was baptized, yeah. she took the name Orem. Yeah. She, that, that was the story of a conversion from Islam yes. to Roman Catholicism. And now they're turning it on its head. I and mean, this is modernism at work. This they is, take the truth and they invert it completely. That's, that's, that was real religious dialogue. That They, they have the dialogue and they, the Muslim converted. Well, we're and just about out of time. But really, what do you think Catholics can do? You made an act of reparation, which was something that had to be done. And God bless you all for going there. In the meantime, what, what can Catholics do about this who don't have the means to go to Fatima and, and make an act of reparation? Well, I think, first of all, I mean, the, the, make a reparation, I, I fully agree. But second thing is, you know, there's no problem in the world, either national or international, either physical or moral, that cannot be solved by the Rosary. Sister Lucy comes back to that time and again. She says, the, the God has given even more power to the Rosary today than before because our times are so bad. So people should be praying the Rosary, asking for the Pope to remove Rector Guerra, asking to remove the Bishop of Fatima now is past his retirement age of 75, ask him to get somebody in there who is really Catholic, who is really loves the Blessed Virgin, who wants to promote the message of Fatima, and, and none of this message, and do it by, at least by prayer. Well, and also, the Pope, also, the Pope has an email address now. I suggest we all start using well, it. Well, also, yes. Catholics must publicly resist at every level, in your parish level or in your diocese level, publicly resist this new ecumenical religion. Yes. Because we saw it full flowered at Fatima, but it's not just happening at Fatima, it's everywhere. 
But in it's, fact, you're, you, have, you, have, you have a case about this, this case, this Buddhist going in someplace in Michigan. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's funny you should mention it because there's a, there's a strange parallel. Another Pius X priest, the Society of Pius X priests, uh, led his congregation into the cathedral at uh, Lansing, Michigan, where they were having, I think it was Buddhists on that occasion, yes. Buddhist, yes. perform their Buddhist chants in the middle of the cathedral. And the Catholics... In the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. And these Catholics, led by this courageous priest, knelt and prayed the rosary, just like at Fatima yeah. in the film we just saw. And I saw and they films of it. The rest. They weren't shouting the rosary, they were just praying it. And, and it was a lawsuit. The, the Buddhists had the nerve, and actually the leader of the Buddhists, believe it or not, was the sacristan at this cathedral. Yes. He was a member of this Buddhist organization. He sued the yeah. priest. And the pastor of the basilica sided with the Buddhists. Now, well, I represented the priest, and the lawsuit ended up being dismissed. But the frightening thing is that such a lawsuit was even filed. The Catholics are being sued for going into their own cathedrals and praying to prevent a sacrilege. And, and that, that tells us all about the state of the... The church, the church today. And so certainly we have to resist it, right, John, wherever we are, whether it's, whether it's in Lansing, Michigan, or whether it's in Montreal, where they had something else going on there, or, or whether it's in Fatima. And certainly we must speak up and speak out against it and, and uh, stop putting your money in the collection plate if they're going to do that. And, and, make, make, and get on your knees and pray. You know, what is it? Uh, St. John, John Hughes points out, if we have bad pastors, it's because... This is a punishment from God. He quotes Jeremiah, and Jeremiah says, Jeremiah, God speaking through Jeremiah says, If you will turn back to me, to God, then I will send you pastors after my own heart. But as Father St. John Eudes points out, but if you don't turn back, back to God, God sends you bad pastors. And so if we're having these bad pastors in Fatima, in Lansing, in, in Montreal, and other places, bringing in pagan worship, that the martyrs, the, all the martyrs of the first, Christian, first centuries, they were martyred for one thing. They would not offer incense. They would not offer worship to false gods. We, we owe it to God and we owe it to our elder brothers in the faith, the, the martyrs who resisted, even under the shedding of their blood. We must resist this encroachment of, of, uh, of paganism into I think the that's church. The, that's the thought in which we should conclude that if we want better pastors, we had better start being better Catholics. Yes. Thank you, Father, for coming. And thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you for watching The Truth in Crisis. Please join us next week and remember to pray the rosary every day. For The Truth in Crisis, I'm Don Pinnell. Our Lady of Fatima promised us in 1917 we would have world peace if Russia were properly consecrated to her Immaculate Heart by the Holy Father. Eighty-nine years have passed. The war in Iraq rages on, which proves her request is still not fulfilled. Show the Holy Father your support for this request. Call us now at 1-888-FATIMA-1 and receive your free petition kit for the consecration that will save lives, souls, and bring world peace. Our Lady of Fatima said, If my requests are granted, Russia will be converted and there will be peace. If my requests are not granted, Russia will spread her errors throughout the world, raising up wars and persecutions against the Church. The good will be martyred, the Holy Father will have much to suffer. Various nations will be annihilated. For more information, please call us at our toll-free number 1-888-FATIMA-1. That's 1-888-328-4621. You can also find out more on our website, www.fatima.org.